charge at anything that comes into their area. And when they are not out grazing, they are normally spotted underwater just like this. That's where they spend the majority of their day. Hippos can hold their breath for up to eight minutes even while they're sleeping, and their bodies will just naturally float to the surface when they need air and then sink back down they have enough. So they don't have to wait for that to happen. Crocodile in Africa, they can reach lengths of up to 16 feet. That's about as long as a giraffe is tall. Now their diet consists mainly of fish in Africa, like the giraffes, the elephants, and the lions, but there are many other animals that call the savanna home. So let's see what we can find out here. You measure from the tip of your middle finger all the way down to your elbow, that is about the same length as a giraffe's tongue. It's actually long enough, long enough for them to lick their ears if they wanted to. And over here on top of the den on our left-hand side, you can see a spotted hyena. Great look at it. Actually, there's two of them. There's one just out front of the den as well. Now, it's not the only sound they make, though. They also make a low whooping noise that can be heard for miles by other animals. Side. Springbok get their name from their ability to jump six feet in the air and leap 13 feet straight in front of them. And they only stand about two to three feet tall, so it is a very impressive jump. And you can also see some much larger antelope there on our left. Those are the eland. They are the tallest antelope in the world. There's a male and a female. The male is obviously the larger one. And when eland are fully grown, they stand about six feet tall at their shoulder. They weigh about 600 pounds, and they can jump five feet straight up in the air and eight feet directly in front of them. That's a very impressive jump. And we are going to get a much better look at these Ancoli cattle here on our right-hand side. One of them, Eland, actually there's a third Eland up on the hill over here on our left-hand side as well. A few more Springbok walking around as well. They walk about 500 to 1,000 miles every single year during their migrations. And you might notice that the wildebeest do have stripes on their fur. Those stripes are not actually a part of their fur, those are sweat marks. Every single day the wildebeest can have a different pattern or a different number of stripes depending on how much or how little they're sweating. Or, excuse me. <clears throat> their heart is also significantly larger than ours is. They have a 25 pound heart and it can be about the size of a basketball. Now, it looks like that giraffe is in the road so we are going to hang right here wait for it to get all the way out. <laughs> Now, a herd of giraffe like this is not easy to tell sometimes. So it's usually when they stop walking, they stand completely still, they're staring up in the distance, and they stop chewing, and a little bit of drool starts to drip from their mouth. That's how you know a giraffe has fallen asleep for, for a few seconds. And it almost always happens when they stand out in front of the truck. So we just got very lucky there. Okay, that one did not fall asleep. I thought it was going to for a second. But I'm going to let it sunlight. And you can also see a lot of these uh, burlap fences that we're going to be coming up to here on our right, and then there'll be a few more up ahead on our left once I come around a few more turns. These burlap fences are up because we have two baby giraffes here on the reserve. They're both about three months old. Their names are Maple and Zella. The way we can tell them apart is Maple has a maple leaf spot on her. Looks like we have just enough room. All right. Actually, you can see the baby mantle just over there. She just ran behind those rocks. That's a little baby olive. She's about six months old, and she's hanging out. I can't, share, can't exactly tell which one's her mom. I think the one right there next to her is her mom, Scarlet. And then the really big fluffy one back there, that's her dad, Linus. He's the leader of this troop. And you can see the monkeys. Very, I'll point that out once we get there. You can see four more elephants just over here. And actually, the shortest one over there, that is the baby elephant of the group. She's almost four years old. not really a baby anymore, but she is just starting to get those tusks in. Both male and female elephants do grow tusks. It is, however, those ivory tusk elephants are constantly being poached for. See those elephants again, back by that baobab tree. Those are the lightest pink, and they are the tallest of all the flamingos. They stand about three feet tall. They weigh about nine pounds. And they get that pink color from the brine shrimp that make up most of their diet. Brine shrimp are very high in beta carotene, and that is exactly what turns their feathers and their skin from a gray color at first to this light pink you can see here. Bad cheetah. There's another one lying down just past those rocks as well. And another one walking around way back there. Now, cheetahs are the fastest land mammal. They can go 0 to 60 in only 3 seconds. And they are one of the only big cats that prefer to hunt during the day. I'll just go There's two females and this male. See it. Looks like he's just waking up. A lion's Unlike cheetahs are nocturnal, oh, and there comes one of the girls. Now, they spend about 18 to 20 hours a day resting, and they do that to conserve their energy before they go out and hunt at night. 
Now, since the females of the pride who go out and do the hunting, all the males stay back to protect the pride. And during the day, a lion's eyesight is about the same as ours, but it... and normally once the sun gets a little bit lower, they will actually start roaring. And it's usually the male lion that is heard roaring the loudest. He does it to mark his territory and ward off other prides of lions. They actually dig their own burrows, but sometimes they do steal them from other animals. And what they do is they back themselves into those holes and keep their tusks fired out for protection. They most of the water they need from the vegetation they eat, and their white fur is really good at reflecting sunlight to help keep their body temperature nice and low. They actually don't even begin to sweat until their body temperature reaches 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the gray ones, those are the water buck. Water buck get their name from the unusually large amount of water that they drink and the fact they're never found too far from a watering hole. They don't like to mine old nests, so those eggs belong to all three of the females that call this reserve home. However, there are no male ostrich here on the reserve. So to show you guys that in the real world in Africa, there would actually be villages like the village of Frambe where we came from and houses like our warden's post over here, right next to these animals. It is not uncommon to find people living here, sometimes even with pets. Actually, as a matter of fact, earlier today, there were some goats out here, Nigerian dwarf goats. They're very small, they only stand about two, two feet tall, they're very cute. 